to my show, A Place to Ponder, uh, where I talk yeah. to creative people about their beginnings, inspirations and work today. So thank you so much for coming on. Honoured to be here and uh, honoured to be named a creative person by you. Thank you. <laughs> Not that I have anything to do with that, but... Uh, <laughs> Yes. I have been uh, knighted as a creative person. Thank God. Oh, my God. I've been, <laughs> trying, like, my, I've been trying my whole life. <laughs> I don't know. Some people find it offensive these days, so I hope you don't find it offensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, definitely not offended. Definitely not offended. So you're an actor. Um, I yeah. wondered if you could speak a little bit about how you got into acting. Uh, it's a crazy kind of weird experience. In my, I, I grew up with um, a single father. Uh, I have a twin sister as well. So it was me, my Italian dad from the Bronx, and my twin sister growing up in New York. Um, you know, we weren't too, we didn't really have much growing up. We kind of lived in a little, you know, uh, a little little tiny apartment together growing up. And uh, my dad always wanted to be an actor. And um, he did like a little bit of acting when he was younger and would take classes. And he's also has a passion for music. And he's a very, 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 very creative person. Um, and he sort of like when we were really, really young, like four or five, he, he kind of was like, you guys are like these cute little half Asian kids. My mom's Taiwanese. Yeah. And we were these cute little half Asian kids, these little bowl cuts and we're twins. And you know, he was like, well, let's see if they can like, you know, make money doing commercials. <laughs> and so we started doing these like Toys R Us commercials and uh, whatever was available. And we, we started doing that a lot, a lot more. And it started becoming more, uh, not just commercials, but like uh, there was actually like, you know, like some acting jobs that ended up started happening. And, and I started enjoying acting as a craft a little bit more. And then um, when I was like 11, um, I, do you know the show, The Last Avatar, The Last Airbender? Yeah, I've heard of that. It's not, yeah, it's now, it's like the, it's kind of a bittersweet experience, but it's like the, it's like the number one show in America right now <laughs> oh, wow. and, and on Netflix. It, it was a cartoon that came out a long time ago, but it was like, it's an incredible show. Yeah. When I was 11, I did the voice of the lead actor, and I was like, I did the whole first season of for this character named Ang. Wow! And uh, it was like this mind blowing experience. It was like working in cartoons, and I loved, I loved anime and like cartoons back then. It was the lead role, and they flew me out to LA, and I was, it was Nickelodeon and all this stuff, and and then uh, I we finished the show, it aired, and then I. I like hit puberty and like my voice was dropping and we lived in New York and they wanted to record in LA and I had my, you know, we were flying back and forth and there was a new director all of a sudden we weren't getting along as much and suddenly I lost this job and it was like the most, it was the most tragic thing oh. of my entire life. I mean, I was 11, so no, not much had happened yet. But, but to an 11 year old, that's a big deal, losing that 11 job. 11 year old, I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to live this down. What am I doing? And, um... What will my you know, friends think? Become, yeah, well, my, my friends were all like, what happened to that show you were doing? And I was like, oh, it's like yeah, I love. And um, anyway, so like, you know, for like a couple of years, I kind of was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, it's there's too much rejection. You know, you do something. I mean, people joke about as an actor, uh, you know, the kind of rejection you get auditioning all the time or getting really close and then losing it to someone, you know, the director's yeah. nephew, right? Yeah. You know? but, yeah. but this was like, you know, we... I got cast in the role. We recorded the entire first season. It aired. I got paid. And then I still lost the job. And it's like, when can you feel safe? You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so for a while, it was like, is this what I want to do? This is, this, is a, this is horrible, right? Like, oh, yeah. um, and then so I kind of took a while. And, it, and I'd always been pushed by my dad to do it. But I, I finally was like, okay, I actually really love doing this because I, I started doing a musical in, in middle school, um, the end of middle school, which is like, we're like 13 in America. I don't know if it's the same um, school system, um, but we're like 13 at the end of middle school. It's like eighth grade, you know? Okay. And uh, I did Guys and Dolls and I like, I don't know, it was like a bunch of, you know, preteen, pubescent, yeah. I had like a little tiny mustache, you know, <laughs> it was like horrible. It was horrible. Fedora. But I loved it. I loved it. And I was like, I, I really want to do this all the time. And uh, and then I auditioned for this school, this high school we have in, in New York called LaGuardia um, Performing Arts School. And, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of people went here. It's like this kind of very selective art school here. And, and that was when I, like, found acting a little bit more for myself um, instead of it being kind of like 
a thing that my dad really liked and wanted me to do as a kid. Yeah. Um, it became like a, uh, a thing that I got to choose, which, it, which was important because a lot of, a lot of child actors never really have that moment where they decide to do it for themselves. They just are born into it. Yeah. Whether or not, you know what I mean? Like the, the kids doing Matilda on Broadway are like, you know, nine years old and they're like on Broadway and it's like, this is my life now. And I've never had a choice. Yeah. You know, I, I am a Broadway person. And stage parents um, have quite a bad rep as well. I guess it can never be seen as positive. Parents, yeah. Like stage parents. Yeah. Stage parents are just terrifying. They're they're. I mean, my dad was surprisingly, you know, decent with all of it. <laughs> and obviously there's all these weird things happening where it's like being a parent and being a business manager at the oh, same yeah, time sure. and a coach and all this stuff. But like the parents we, that we saw, you know, they were, they, it was horrible because they're all doing it for their ego a lot of the time and, and they're, they're living through their kids and it's, yeah. it can be kind of messed up in that so way. Toxic. That kind of pressure on a kid is, is a lot. And especially when they start making money for, for the family and stuff, it's just like, uh, Shia LaBeouf did a movie about his childhood as a, as a child actor, this movie, Honey Boy. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, it was just, it's so real. So real. But anyway, so did this high school thing and it was, it was really incredible. Uh, went to NYU Tisch, uh, for acting as well. Cause I thought, oh, I need to go to college for acting to be a real actor. Kind of realized that I didn't really need to do that, but it was a really great experience anyways. And then I was already working. I already had an agent by then, um, by college. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then I was just auditioning, auditioning. And then I did my first like kind of big role as an adult on a show called, uh, the Carrie Diaries. Yes. Um, I love it. It's like a, it's like a, yeah, yeah. It's like a Sex in the City prequel, kind of like CW version of, you know, yeah, Sex in the City. It's very <laughs> different, obviously, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience with some really great friends there. Um, and that was like my first like recurring role, which That's was sort of like one. a, a more central, more central than just like doing your one line doctor guy who's like, you have cancer. And then he oh, leaves and then you're like, oh my God. That was his first role. That's not. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah. So then, and then since then, I've just been, I've been pretty consistent. I've been very lucky to be consistently working on, on random TV shows and little indie films and stuff like that in New York. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, it sounds like you hit your rock bottom at 11, which is very sad. Very young. <laughs> yeah, God, I was, I got that call and I was like, oh my God, I got to grow up or I got to leave this and go become a carpenter or something like that like I don't know it would have been sad though like, if you'd left it because of that at least you sort of saw it through yeah and came out the other side yeah I know it's kind of a I remember just being like just really disturbed I was like oh this, this is the worst I can I imagine mean, and I actually I actually met the woman that apparently made the call to my dad oh, um okay. that like you know like we're letting him go and we're going with someone else you know um, she made that call to my dad when I was 11, like 15, 16 years ago. And um, I met her a couple years ago. And it was at a showcase I was doing with this ABC thing. And she, she I had performed on stage and everything was going well and I had been doing stuff. So I was like, I had, had gotten a job afterwards. So it yeah. wasn't like the end. And she goes, Julian, oh my God, it's, I can't. I'm so glad to see that you're okay <laughs> because I remember making that call to your dad and being like, I'm destroying this kid's life. You know, like I feel so Imagine bad. Imagine if she had though. <laughs> like... Yeah, I know. I mean, she was like, I, I, I can't tell you how happy I am that you're now not like, a, you know, like some messed up, like, you know, yeah. and I was like, oh, I know. Thank God. Like, I know um, she got let, let off the hook there. Cause you so could have ended yeah, up right, the exactly. other way. <laughs> Lucky her. Exactly. And was your dad yeah, in doing, Sorry. What was that? Was your dad in acting or did he just see potential in you and your sister? Was it sister or no, he, My sister, sister like totally hated acting and, oh. and really went the other direction. She's an incredible like creative designer and she she's a creative director and she does like um she's very she has her own book series and oh, she's wow. an activist and she yeah, she's really incredible. But she's like the opposite. She's shies away from the public stuff and is more of an artistic like illustrator, designer, photographer. Yeah. Um my dad, like, he, he would do, you know, he'd done commercials when he was younger, and he would take a lot of acting classes. He really wanted to get into a career of acting. Um, me and my sister showed up, and it became a little bit more difficult to have a consistent career in acting. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, with two, with two kids on your own, it's, uh, I think, uh, pretty much impossible to survive on an acting yeah. uh, budget. But, um, 
but uh, but yeah. But what I was gonna say is, um, sorry, I didn't mean kind to of come full circle. No, I weirdly, I weirdly ended up I, this show that just came out um, last month. It's called Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts, and it's a DreamWorks like Netflix cartoon, and uh, it keeps getting a lot of references to uh, it having like an Avatar: The Last Airbender vibe, <laughs> and it's a cartoon that I've been recording over the last year, and it's it's turned out so I'm so happy with how it's turned out. It's really beautiful and inclusive and modern and well animated and funny and like heartwarming and stuff. And I, and I was just like sitting there and I was like, wow, I really came full full circle. I ended wow. up in this show that's just like it in some ways. And yeah. as an adult, I'm like very happy to. Anyways, it, it, these these kinds of things just end up affecting you so much when you're younger. Uh, it was cool to see, like, uh, yeah, kind of full circle return to the animation on the animated world. So. Yeah, that that's really cool. How how is it? Um, like, how does it differ doing voices for animation compared to actually acting in a series? Because it must be quite hard to get into character because there's no costume. There's no. I can't yeah. imagine there's any cameras or anything. It's just you probably in a booth with a microphone pretending to be yeah. a dinosaur or whatever, something like that. That's exactly what it is. It's so weird. I mean, it's it's a totally different experience because, I mean, I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know, actually. Do you have, like, an active act? Have you been acting at all? Or are you, do, you, are you, do you want to be an actress? Are you a filmmaker? Um, I, I don't fancy myself as an actress, no. Okay. Gotcha. I, gotcha. I've done, cool. I've done cool. dance in the past, but um, okay. not acting. <laughs> so you're in the creative field. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... Um, being on set is like such a really interesting, weird system. It's I'd love like, to you know, experience you wake up, it. You wake up at 4 a.m. because you have to get there before the sun rises, basically. And you get to this place, and you're, you're like half awake, and then they're like doing hair and makeup for an hour and making you look like you, have, you know, you're glowing and you're like you look, you know, <laughs> you're like never look better. And then you know you got all this wardrobe and you eat, you know you eat breakfast with everybody in this in this hall and then. You sit in your trailer until for sometimes six hours, and then you hop out and you shoot your scene. And it can be any scene; it could be the end of the entire series that you're shooting at first. And you're like, you know, it's all out of order, and it's, and it's just this. It's this incredible interpersonal um, experience. And a lot of the time, it's in these little small towns all around the, the world, and and uh, you just get this really this really interesting community experience. It's always unique, you know. You always become very close voiceover on the other hand is like I, I record three episodes in, an, in like an hour you know what I mean you, you, you go in sweatpants you don't do any makeup it's not about your visual obviously at all um, and sometimes they don't even give you the full script they'll just give you the pages with your lines on it and you're not doing it usually with the other people especially if you're doing it remotely which I was doing because I was uh. in New York and they were uh, they were all in LA so I'm not even acting with the other actors um you do your line, the director kind of helps you, gives you the, what the performance might be, and then then you you try to imagine being in it and give it a little bit more energy than you would on film or TV. Um, it's definitely like a different kind of energy. It's a, it's a lot more enunciative. It's a lot more um, a lot more a little over the top, especially depending on the style of the cartoon. Yeah. Um, it's a totally different experience. It's really chill. I would suggest it for anybody. It's super fun, and it's like very like low stakes in, in the sense that you just when you mess up a take, you do it ten more times, and you've got all these choices. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes on set you'll be you'll be shooting, and it's like the sun is setting, and you're on the beach, and you have to shoot this romantic scene, and one person's sobbing, you know, and they're like, "We have eight minutes to shoot this before the sun goes down. If you don't cry, and you're like, oh my god, like." <laughs> Oh my god, my makeup smeared, and the, the thing, and then that thing, and there's like sand on his face, and what the hell's going on? The wind's too strong, you know. And then you're like, it doesn't work. Everything needs to be perfect for yeah. film and TV, you know. For voiceover, it's like we're just doing this one thing. And you're you're one part of this very large system, you know, and you're not you're not the most important thing. It's like you're 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 just part of the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's cool to have that. It's cool to have that. Yeah. That sounds. That sounds. Pretty enticing to be yeah. And also, voiceover people are the best. Voiceover people are like the engineers and the actors. They're all like so kind. It's a very small community of people who are very, very talented. Mm -hmm. And a lot of voiceover actors play multiple parts. They'll play like 10 different parts in the show because they can do all these different voices. You know? Yeah. It's really cool. Wow, that's so cool. So I know this was a few years ago now, but I've been watching yeah. your Julie's Green Room um, oh my God. series on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh 
Hello, people watching this now. This is the children's show I did with Julie Andrews, Dame Julie Andrews. <laughs> I it's mean, for like six year olds, but it's in, but it's like a awesome show for six year olds, but it's but it's for, it's for like toddlers. Yeah. I felt like I was tripping a bit because of all the puppets. It's kind of trippy, yeah. yeah. It's kind of trippy. It's like Dame Julie Andrews is showing up for her first role in like fifteen years. <laughs> you have like a bunch of like humanoid puppets that are are. And there's like a musical scene, and then we have all these like random celebrities come in and teach. Um, <laughs> that show was such a trip. That show was a trip. How yeah. was it working with the lady herself, Dame Julie oh my Andrews? God. Dame Julie Andrews, man, she she was such a beautiful person. I mean, it was so awesome to like, I don't know, watch Mary Poppins and Sound of Music growing up like, yeah. so many times, and then meet her in person in the audition process and be like, wow, this is an open, an open heart. And, and then work with her for about three months. And it was like, it was just me and her really, because the rest of the cast was, was, was puppets. And obviously I got very close with puppeteers as well, but they're kind of like the way they shoot. Um, yeah. It's all quite, puppets because the puppeteers are like below yeah. ground. Like they build a lifted stage and you have full human adults, like in their thirties and forties, like hiding under these like loft, like rafters. And so really what ends up happening is like a lot of the time I was on stage alone or with her. Um, we were the only human beings in the show. And then the puppets would come up and sometimes be speaking and like, you know, and I'd be talking to them. And I'm like, wow, it's like, a, it's like a real kid. And sometimes they'd be just like totally dead because they wouldn't have their arm in there. And I'd be like, oh my God, I'm surrounded by dead children. <laughs> It is a bit. It's here. a bit scary. I'm alone here with these guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it was, yeah, it was. Uh, it was crazy. I mean, she, she is, she is better, more amazing than you can imagine. Like Julie Andrews is so like heartwarming, and, and you know, all the movies she do, all that people know her for are very like family oriented too. So they're very like, oh, she's like this incredible sure. like warm soul. But she also has this kind of like darker cynical side to her that is really nice to see is working with her by the end of the day she's like i need a fucking margarita you know and you're <laughs> yeah. like yes yeah, yeah like, you're like yeah you go girl <laughs> hey, Julie Andrews, let's go let's do it yeah or no martini a martini and i'm like let's do it man let's let's go and she was like the she was like the coolest grandma and mentor and like we got really close we started looking out for each other because it was a tough shoot yeah we were shooting like we were shooting an episode every three days, which is like way too fast. Like we were shooting on four cameras. It was like, it was really intense. So we were not sleeping much and we were like constantly shooting and like learning 20 pages of lines a day. So it was, it was intense. We were just looking out for each other a lot, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, what uh, better person to be alongside? Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was one of the coolest experiences. And I was like, oh, God, a children's show is going to ruin my dramatic acting career or whatever. And it was all like, who cares? Like, this is this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I got to have this wonderful time with her. And um, Also, the show is just really getting the feedback from peop from parents that have been, like, showing it to their kids. And, or they're like, there's nothing like this show for our kids, and it's so cool. They're writing their own musicals. They're dancing. They're wow. coming up with new ideas. It was really it was really cool to see, yeah. That's so nice to hear that your work has such an impact because children are the future. And so for yeah. the, your show to like, inspire them, I think it's so cool. I know. It was like, I was like, is this going to be like Blue's Clues? Am I going to be Steve from Blue's Clues? I don't <laughs> want to be Steve. You know, I don't want to be. But then it wasn't like that. And, and, and what was really cool for me is like, it, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm half Asian. My mom's Taiwanese. And as an Asian actor, it's just not... I didn't see a lot of people that look like me on screen growing up, you know, um, on film or TV, especially on children's TV. It's just like, you know, yeah. it's just not a very diverse um, group of actors. And so I, I, you know, I was like one of the first Asian um, leads in a children's show. Um, and it was really cool to, to do that. And that was a really big deal for me because I was like, I want like other, you know, Asian kids or half Asian kids or whatever, mixed kids to look up and, uh, and watch a children's show and not just be like watching like, you know, only white representation. For sure. um, it was cool. The show was really inclusive and, and I, I was a really big fan of their ideals when it came to that stuff. So that was another big one. Wow. That's, yeah, that's amazing. And, and to know that kids will be looking at you and thinking, I can do that. 
like seeing right, someone yeah, that no, looks like this, themselves yeah. and, and thinking, yeah, I can yeah. do that. Because I feel like it takes exactly, to see someone that you see yourself in to feel yeah. like you can do something. So, yeah. yeah, that must be a really cool feeling. That's kind of what representation really is all about. You know, it's like, to me, it's like if you can go to a theater or go or turn your Netflix on or whatever and like see someone that looks kind of like you going through an experience that maybe you went through or something you want to go through or something you've had to deal with a trauma or something and you can go wow like i connect with that and i feel seen now like feel hurt like that's that's what we're all hoping for you know for sure but that's what i've been hoping for with you know the hope this this diversity movement that i think is is happening right now that's a, a really exciting revolution in in film and tv last last couple of years and obviously right now yeah I, I completely agree completely yeah and so the audition process you yeah. you i'm assuming you had to audition alongside julie andrews you weren't just cast yeah. oh my god i was late i was late to oh, my no. to my call back i got i got stuck on the train and the taxi wouldn't take me there and i was running and i had to bring my guitar because they wanted like me to play music i, I it was it was so crazy. I got I, I gotten off a plane too. It was like it was like the craziest callback. And I get there and it's like her and her daughter and like the whole team and like they they were they had been waiting for like forty minutes and they were like who's this guy we were waiting for forty minutes for and I was like I it was because I was the plane was delayed and I was trapped. Oh, bless. That must have been awful. And then we, yeah. Then we then we did it and then it it ended up working out. You know, it was like it, it was just one of those things and. Apparently they were saying they were looking for someone with a different vibe, but I came in playing some of my music as well, my like original music and stuff. Because I'm a musician as, as well, and, yeah. And they were really into that, and uh, it was cool to just go in into something. And they had kind of a wide net that they were casting for the character, and um, I was like, I'm not going to try to fit into anything that I think they want to fit into. I'm just going to do me, and hopefully that's what they want, you know. And uh, and it ended up being that way and it gave me a lot of confidence in the future to do the same I was a lot of time you go into auditions and, and you kind of end up going like how can I be what they wrote down as the as the breakdown like how can I be drug dealer guy you yeah. know bad boy whatever you know like how do I be that I'm gonna dress like a bad boy do a bad boy you know like what, what is that you know yeah that's what a lot of actors do you know you, you yeah, go in it's tough. you're not having to fit this character because I'm an actor but it was this freeing moment where you go Instead, like, what if I just go as me in these circumstances? Like, you know, if I was a drug dealer, what would I be like? I don't know. Let's see. You know, yeah, like, let's see what let's happens. Lines. Let's try it out. Yeah, <laughs> instead of trying so hard to be what, um, yeah, what, what they're talking about. And, and, and it ends up working really well, um, surprisingly. And, you know, when the role is right, it, it really fits because then you end up get, getting to be yourself instead of trying so hard to be uh, – something else you know what I mean yeah for it's, sure. a, it's a it's a that's part of the acting journey figuring out who you are and how you can represent um yourself in a more uh you know honest way I feel like with that show in particular they cut they couldn't really be too picky about what they specifically wanted because at the end of the day it's surely it's just someone that gets along with Julie Andrews has some good yeah, yeah, chemistry yeah. with her. Specifically in that in that role, I mean, less like what I was just saying, and more like they were like, "Hey, can you juggle? Can you whistle? Can you do guitar? Can you dance? Can, you do, like, can you do all of these random things? And also, are you like not white? Are you mixed race or something? You know?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, "I was like, yep, let's go. Like that's me. Like <laughs> you were asking for a person who can like do a bunch of random crap. Like that is that is me. I have these <laughs> weird talents. Like I don't know. I was like, yeah, I can juggle. I can." To ballet for two years and then yeah. play guitar and a sing and whistle and whatever and they were like perfect we need He's someone who can do all of those things yeah yeah and I was like okay well I guess this is me then you know like, I know yeah I know we touched on it um slightly earlier but what is it like to act with puppets how do you learn you know, to it, talk to something that doesn't actually really talk you know they threw it on me they threw it on me in the callback uh when I was late and all that stuff and I had like 10 pages of lines and all these songs I had to do. And I got there and they were like, hey, you're going to do a five minute improv with a puppet. And I was like, what? That was your punishment for being late. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that was my punishment. I was like, oh, great. No, everyone else is not doing that great. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, but they, they were like, let's do this improv thing. And it was so easy. And I think that was kind of why they were, they were happy. It was 
it, it was so easy because these were like Sesame Street guys. They were like the best puppeteers in the world, wow, you know, yeah. Jim Henson company. Like these guys are the, literally the people doing the Muppets in Sesame Street, you know, these, we were working with all those guys. Wow. And, um, it, it was actually like literally just like talking to a kid. It, it, it wasn't even, they're so good at it and they're so real that you really don't have to do that much. So are they also the like voices? Acting. The people that move the puppets, are they also the people that speak? Yeah, so it's kind of, puppeteers are kind of like, like really technically, you know, technically moving the, the eyebrows and the mouth and all that stuff with their hands. Technically talented voiceover artists. It's like voiceover wow. plus doing this, all this mechanical stuff with the puppet. So they're really doing two jobs at once. It's yeah. kind of crazy. And they go through this incredible training program. I have so much respect for puppeteers now because I had no idea. There, there's so few people that are really good at this. And they are incredible voice actors. And a lot of them have great careers in voiceover as well. And also, they're technically trained for, for months and years in, in you know, moving the puppet and yeah. like working with the different eye, eye movements and the mouth movements and minuscule things to make them feel incredibly human and it's so interesting to see them like what they would call it dead you know like no, nobody using it and then you see them come to life and you're like oh my god wow. like that thing just turned into a human being like in one second you yeah. know it's really it was really yeah i'd imagine without certain sort of mannerisms and i don't know what you'd call them but slight movements it just wouldn't look um like a human there's there's very yeah, yeah. subtle things that will make it yeah there's super su subtle body language stuff that they have to do like they do a lot of stuff with breathing so like if they're breathing oh, they cool. kind of emulate breathing so that like when they're hanging out there they kind of move like like very lightly and they'll like when they turn they'll like kind of pop up their like eyebrow a little bit or or like they move their some of them would have like actual eyes that they could move and stuff like that i mean it's it, it was so crazy, and there's so much that they're doing, and that's that's subconscious stuff as well to create human life. It's not just turn talk, you know. Yeah. It's really like, and you actually have another person a lot of the time doing the other arm because they need to like do props and stuff. So they have a right hand, oh, and then wow. the main puppeteer, and they like doing stuff with props. It was crazy. It was like so there'd be like 15 cute. people under us while we're like doing a scene with four puppets and whatever, and they're like they're all like sliding around on these like. <laughs> These like wheelie stools and oh, wow. have their own monitors and they've got headbands. I mean, they're like athletes. It's really incredible. Getting yeah. into like contortionist artists, like in really yeah. weird positions. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're contorting themselves to the craziest positions. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. So you were also in um, Iron Fist, the Marvel yeah, yeah, series yeah, yeah. Iron Fist, yeah. on Netflix. <laughs> oh yeah, that that show is so awesome. It, I, I'd always dreamed of being on like a like a. Action. I mean, look, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm Asian and I, I, you know, I speak some Mandarin and I, I've taken like Kung Fu in the past, partly because people are kind of, <laughs> to be, you know, to be blunt, kind of racist and are like, can you do Kung Fu? You're mm. Asian. Can you do Kung Fu? People are yeah. so blunt. But I was like, I was like, screw it. I'm, yeah, I'm going to, I'll be that guy, you know? So I started taking Kung Fu and, and they were asking if I had any fighting training. And this show is just like a, just like a fun action packed comic book show and there's a ton of kung fu fighting yeah. and like ninjas and like superpowers and stuff so i just had a blast playing this like little this little um little fuck boy excuse the term but he's like <laughs> this kid my character's like got a little beanie on he's like yo what's up like you know like he's got his hoodie yeah and he you know he comes from the streets of new york and uh he's part of this little gang and and it, it was just uh it was such a cool experience to shoot in new york like in chinatown a lot and to take these kung fu lessons, we were doing a lot of choreography stuff too. I'm there's sure a lot yeah. of fighting scenes, a lot of action scenes, and that was kind of that's always been a dream for me. I would love to do that even more, you know, um, like you know, go train for like three or six months, and just like get, you know, just get amazing. Get and so really that's good. the cool thing about acting. You kind of get like, you know, if your character has a skill and you have a little bit of that skill, you like train it really intensely for the time you're shooting and from before. And it's a really good excuse to just give your all to something. Yeah. You know, like this is my job, this is my life for now. So I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna do my best at this thing. And uh, it's it's always a fun experience to get this crazy new skill or this new life experience. Yeah, wow. Were there um, stunt people involved as well, or was or were you all oh, doing yeah. your own stunts? No. 
Oh, no, no. I mean, we would do our, some of our own stunts, but, you know, when it comes to the fighting stuff, we would do choreography. But if someone's, basically, if someone's put in a situation where they could really hurt themselves, like if they're falling onto something or crashing into something, getting thrown, yeah. landing on their back, um, they will swap out for a stunt person, you know, or riding a car or a bike or something like that. Yeah. Um, but most of the time, you know, we were doing a lot of our own stunts because we were working alongside these really talented choreographers and they were teaching us the stunt choreography in a way that was super safe and really, really good. And they, and they, a lot of them worked on all the Marvel shows, working on Transformers and, you know, they're, they're working on everything. These stunt people, it's a, again, like the puppeteers, you know, it's a very small group of very talented people who are just, you know, whatever they move on to the next project and they're just like, on, you'll, you'll see yeah. their IMDBs. It's like hundreds of credits, you know, my uncle the board. Um, was a stunt man and he's now like a stunt coordinator and oh, cool. just yeah, yeah, yeah. listening to, some of his stories it's just like oh my incredible God. absolutely some incredible of yeah their job is like so insane but it's so cool to see the passion that some that some people have for their work i mean they just love it and they're like yeah i broke my ribs on this thing but it was so sick i was jumping over this car across a bridge and you're like what it's like a badge of honor <laughs> yeah they're like yeah it's sick i broke this rib three times broke this rib other time i dislocated my shoulder four times but now it's even stronger and I have a titanium. I'm like, oh <laughs> my God, you guys are like the ultimate daredevils, you know? And, yeah. and they just, and that's their job. I mean, it's incredible. It's like, if you didn't break anything, did you actually do the job? <laughs> yeah, did you actually, you didn't break, yeah, um, actually, definitely not trying to break it. Definitely yeah. not trying to break it. But but yeah, I mean, they're, they put themselves in like, in seriously dangerous situations sometimes. And it's, For sure. uh, it's, uh, incredible work that they're doing yeah yeah so it was a very it's a very different show to julie's green room um yeah. in terms of everything i would say they are polar yeah. opposites how yeah. do you um how do you get into sorry my emails keep coming through how do you get into such a different character because i feel like often you see actors sort of playing similar roles in different films right. how how do you go from one extreme to the other yeah you know like the, that that's that's really I don't know perceptive of you. I feel like that's something that's difficult to figure. It took me a while to figure out at least is like what what is the difference between mediums with different kinds of shows, different kinds of films. Um, you know, children's show. I'm like playing this sweet, nice guy who gets along with everybody and really, you know, just for, they want like likability and warmth. You know what I mean? And that was basically the only thing I would focus on with that with uh, julie's green room with iron fist you know it's a drama it's um it's a comic book show it's about characters it's about the intensity of scenes it's about the plot a lot you know especially dr dramatic tv shows are a lot about the plot and moving the plot forward and staying in the world of the world because people get invested in it and that's what keeps them coming back every season you know and so for that i i like to say like what i was saying before about about acting like you know you get these breakdowns the breakdown for my character was like he's a fighter from the streets you know a, a tough kid who has a big heart or something like that you know it was like one of these things and i was like how do i play that you know what i mean yeah. and i was like let me not play it let me just like imagine the world where that was me yeah and in some ways it was i'm from new york you know and i didn't grow up a lot and i know kids like that were like that and i just imagined them and Imagine myself in that situation, and I just went in and read the lines that they gave me, you know. And, and it, style-wise, like, I know going in that to a Netflix drama, um, it's going to be much more subdued, much more low energy. It's going to be much more still. Mm -hmm. It's going to be much, much less big. Because, I mean, look, the Julie's Green Room stuff was basically like a sitcom in some ways. It was shot on a stage with four cameras it was basically theater you know? like, yeah i was gonna um, say it was quite theatrical yeah it was like it was like theater but on camera and mm -hmm. it's for kids so the acting style is even more broad you know what i mean and there's musical numbers and stuff but iron fist is like a, you know really close like you know you, you you ask the cameraman like how tight are you gonna be on my face if you're this tight then i know like i want to keep my eye movements to a minimum i want to keep my facial movements to a minimum because if i go like this out of nowhere it's like shaking the whole screen, you know, and or the whole theater if it's a film. So you really have to be more focused with your energy. 
that, that's always what I try to do is try to be real. Like it's like me in this situation. If I live in this, you know, life path and then, uh, you know, what's it going to be on Netflix drama? What are the other Marvel shows like? They're intense. They're close up. There's, there, there's moments of intimacy. And so I'm going to make my energy a little bit more still, a little bit more focused. And, uh, and then, yeah, imagine being in, in that world and see how that goes. Wow, now you're explaining it even deeper. It's like incredible the differences. Like watching shows like Iron Fist, you you wouldn't know that that you have that people have to be super yeah. still and things like that. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing. Boy, oh no, of course. I mean, I could talk about this stuff forever. Like I, yeah. I think about it a lot because I, I have played a lot of random kind of roles. Like a lot of the roles that I play are very different, um, and the mediums are kind of different. I've done like indie films that are like super realistic. Um, I did did a uh, comedy, like this camp pilot, and it was like, you know, it was a comedy. So things are lighter. It's all about playing with the characters and and uh, and making sure to deliver the jokes. You know what I mean? There's always like a different style of acting that I think applies to each medium. If you're trying to, like, you should always be bringing yourself. But you know, there's there's a lot of different parts to ourselves that we can use and focus on. in each kind of role. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that you have to be exactly the same in every role, you know? I mean, there are a lot of people who come in and they have the same energy, but but depending on the show and the medium and the style of things, you kind of want to, you know, be in the same world so that you can create a experience for the audience. And it's also just fun to, like, do, you know? Like, it's just fun to get into it. Yeah. If it's intense, it's like, it's like, you came here, what are you doing? You know? Your heart's, like, racing. <laughs> you get to have fun. Yeah, you get to really live it. You're like, oh, my God, my life's in danger. This yeah. is not Dewey's Green Room where I'm taking care of a bunch of kids at summer camp. It's, like, it's like intense. Like, we're going to fight for our lives right now, you know? So yeah. it, you get to just take that on, and it's just such a, it's such a blast, yeah. How was it um, playing your death? I know I'm spoiling things for people oh, yeah. that haven't seen it. It's been out for it's been out for years. <laughs> for a few years, um, yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was kind of scary actually. It's scary because you know the other actor who who kills me. He was he was going for it. This guy uh, Sky. He, he's he's a good buddy of mine. He's an incredible actor. He's a Broadway actor. He was in Dear Evan Hansen as well. Wow. Um, and he betrays me, you know, and he like stabs me in the stomach and it's like really violent it made me jump i literally jumped out my skin i was like oh gosh (laughs) yeah no you know the crazy thing is like the last like four projects i've been in i've died and i'm like what's going on here am i is that my type the guy who gets killed like what the (laughs) hell's going on that's so mean (laughs) it's so weird to die because you see you know when you're in it as an actor you're kind of like oh we're playing around this is fake blood and stuff when you watch it it's really disturbing it's very disturbing because it's like you know, and there's moments where you spend a lot of time dead on the floor, you know, or, or and you have people coming up checking your pulse and stuff, and you're like, this is surreal. Like, yeah. I, this is what it's like to be on the edge of, of, of death. Like, you know, there's ambulances around, people checking your pulse and dragging your body or whatever, like, you know, crazy crap like that. And, uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, it's crazy. I had a, I did another show on Facebook, uh, Facebook Watch called The Birch, and and I die in that too. And I have to like slit my own throat with like a, I'm in the hospital, and like mm-hmm. I have this, and my eyes were gouged out by this monster. It's like a horror show. It's like my eyes were gouged out. I was blind for six hours, and I had this actual thing over my eyes, and I was really couldn't see. And I was doing these scenes with them, and then I had to kill myself. And it was just like we're in a real hospital, and you've got the real thing on your finger, and you. And you're actually like lying there blind, and you're like, "This is a crazy job. This is a crazy job." <laughs> it, is, it is crazy. I've never thought about actually the actor then watching it back, watching themselves. Yeah, watching die. it back is is weird. Yeah, because you're like, "That's my body getting. I'm dead." Now. Getting stabbed. You're like this. I know you mentioned earlier that you're also a musician. Is that something yeah. that you're looking to sort of merge more into, or sort of do it alongside oh, yeah. acting? Um, you know, especially during all quarantine COVID stuff, like music has been, I mean, music as of like last January, I put a single out for real. I I produce and write and sing, play guitar and stuff. So I put a single out and just like, was like, let me put it on Spotify, um, whatever, just put it out in the world. So it's real, you know, I had a listen and Um, I think it's a really beautiful song by the way. So thank you. Yeah. It's like very, like, you know, it's very like ambient and like bulky. Very ambient. Yeah. Experience. And, um, 
but it, it got like a lot of really good response and a lot of people are listening now all over the world it's been so cool to see because it's so separate from my acting and uh releasing that was the first time where i was like whoa like i got to make something of my own that's all mine that's something from you know that i've written because as an actor you're really just you're just acting in other people's stuff you know you're mm -hmm. not you're not usually the writer, director, producer, actor, you know, there's some people like that who are incredible. A lot of comedians do that. And, but like most of the time you're just hired, you go to a casting and you fit the role and you play the role, you know? Um, and it's not your words. It's not your movie. It's not your script. And that's an awesome thing to do. It, it takes a lot of pressure off, but as a musician, it was cool to create something of my own and be like, I am in control of this. And this is something that I get to leave behind, you know? Um, so that's been a really satisfying thing separately uh, as a performer and as, and just like playing concerts in New York. And I've been getting, you know, I've been recording a lot more and I've also been producing some music for other people as well, friends of mine who are actors or stuff like that. It's been a really, really fulfilling process um, that I've been, um, I've been, I've been really enjoying. Yeah. So I've been working on in quarantine, you know, you, you I have, you, I'm on the computer right now that I record on, so, you know, I'm in my room. <laughs> I got my little on-air, I got my microphone here, you know, yeah. I got my guitars, like, this is where I record, and um, it's uh, it's so nice to have this creative venue, because um, acting is basically on hold for, for sure. in indeterminate amount of time, um, so music has been my, my, my venue these days, yeah. I actually saw on the news, I don't know if it was, like, satire news, but... It was like a ro like the first robot actress or actor. Yeah, no, I saw that's real. That's real. That's they trained scary. her. They trained her in method acting too. In method it's acting. Like yeah, they like they were like let's take this AI robot girl, and then they actually like got a coach to train her in acting. They're asking for a disaster. If you're, if I was like, my did you guys not see every movie where this goes wrong? Like every <laughs> movie. I know. It's like it's don't just, give them sentience. No, it's don't so teach them method acting. They're gonna go method murder everybody. You know, like come on. Dude. Yeah, but also it's like there's. It's not like they're short of actors and they need to bring in robots. Like there's plenty of people no. that want to act. Like why bring no, in you know a machine? What? Everybody wants to see that movie now. Everybody's gonna be like, I need to see the first AI actor movie. Like. I think it's going to be a disaster. I think personally. it's going to be a piece like, of shit, if I'm honest. Yeah. Do you, do you know uh, Do you know what Uncanny Valley is? It's like this idea. Um, it's a concept about basically like video games and robotics and 3D design where as it gets more and more realistic yeah. looking, but it's not quite human looking, it gets more and more disturbing. Yes, I've heard like, that. Like disturbing to watch. And until it's like really like we were talking about like the puppeteers have this down where they it's cartoony but they feel real the eyes and the movements they're doing it's all very realistic robots they have not gotten that down yet so it's still like it looks like it the closer it looks to a human it's still disturbing it gets more and more disturbing as it gets closer to a human because you know it's not a human you see like the jiggling of the silicon oh, on their face or whatever gosh. and you're like oh my god like this is like i can't watch this yeah it's like freaky it gives you nightmares you know i just don't so. want to see it like we have this um show in the uk called this morning and it's like a chat yeah. show um and there's this guy and he brought in it was like a robot sex doll and like it was the oh scariest god. thing ever I'm so, he, I was so just, freaked out by he it. just unabashedly brought his robot sex doll on it was sat show. on the sofa next to him had he already done the deed? Who knows? I do not want With to know. With the robot? Or was this a new one? Oh my god. It was just very strange. I think he was trying to like revolutionize sex dolls, but I don't think that's he really was like, a market I'm going to change everything by, <laughs> you know, sex dolls' lives that Basically. are important. And you're like, wait, yeah. what's happening here? I, I'm lost. <laughs> Honestly, robots are terrifying, and I hope they just sort of. I hope it fails yeah, so that it doesn't fails. become a thing. I'm hoping that this movie tanks yeah and people are like this is not the right move yeah. have you seen Michaela on instagram little Michaela? yeah it's uh, a robot right she's like a 3d animated person they made up i was so i was so unsure what she was i, I saw it on, on instagram and i was like she is got this signed thing? by caa recently which is like the biggest agency how I'm is like, that even a thing like are they what the hell is minds? this like what's going on <laughs> right now yeah that, that's i was scary. like damn i gotta upload my brain and
into some kind of robot or else I'm screwed. I'm not going to get any work. You know? What's next for you? What's on the horizons? Um, well, you know, I had a, I had this really cool, it wasn't announced in like, I was three days before quarantine um, that I was about to start work on it. And then quarantine happened and they put everything on hold. I was going to work on this really cool pilot for CBS called Ways and Means is a, with Patrick Dempsey from Grey's Anatomy. And yeah. It was, a, it was a really cool part. It was a little bit older. I usually play like teenagers, you know? And so it was my first role as an adult a little bit more because, you know, I'm in my mid twenties and it's like, Oh, I get to play in my mid twenties finally. I mean, by the time I'm like 17, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I look pretty young, but you know, and, um, I was really excited. And then it was like, Hey, this virus is, you know, we can't do this. Like we can't shoot, you know? So I'm hoping that that ends up happening, but until then I'm just sort of, sort of here and like the only thing I have control over is my music um, um, that I can really do on my own. So I've been recording um, a lot um, back home here in the studio. And um, I also have been composing like uh, scores for this, uh, for this podcast, this narrative podcast called day by day. Uh, it's a really, really cool podcast. That's like um, all fiction stories about like quarantine experiences and, these uh, these guys um, reached out to me from Must Be Nice, and they um, they were like, "Hey, can you you like your music? Can you score this? And maybe can you wow. act in one of these?" And yeah, yeah, yeah. they're really cool. You should check it out. Oh. Um, and I, I've been having a lot a, a great time just like composing um, a score scores for these things and uh, writing, recording music. So I've been really in the music world lately. Um, I'm excited to get back into acting stuff, and the auditions are starting to come in again, but. It's all up in the air, you know? I'm sure. It's all like, when are we going to be able to be around other people? Um, when is that going to be safe? And in America, it's kind of like really unknown because it's, you know... It's and there's always the nuts. risk of the second wave, which everyone keeps going on. The around. second wave, third wave, tidal wave, whatever, you know? It's like, <laughs> this is... People need to start wearing masks here, like everyone, you know? Like, mm. I, I I, do that, but there's only so much you can do, you know? For sure. So I have a feeling everything's going to be shooting in, like, Budapest, for the next like, five yeah. years, you know, like everybody's gonna be like, "Hey, we're going to not America." <laughs> yeah. um, Definitely. But yeah, so uh, I also have season season three of Kipo, um, that cartoon I was talking about. It's gonna come out on Netflix in the next couple of months. That's season exciting. two just came out. Um, I play this character Troy in that, and it's been cool. You know, it's like it, it, a career as an actor is awesome because sometimes you're waiting around and you're like. I have to wait for other people to give me auditions and do things. And then you realize, wait, you know, I don't have to wait. I have all these other things I can do. I can write for myself. I can make music. I can do other things because there is a lot of downtime in acting. Yeah. It's like, it's like you're, you're waiting for months and then all of a sudden you're working for four months in another place and you leave your whole life behind. And then you come back for the rest of the year and you're just finding other ways to keep busy and keep yeah. yourself creatively, um, you know, interested in what's going on. So yeah. I've been writing, and um, and then yeah, I'm doing a lot of music stuff, so it's been cool. Well, hopefully things will start to be going back to normal, and we won't have a yeah. second wave, and everyone will live happily ever after. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think I think I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, I see New York. You know, when we were like in April. It was like it felt like the end of the world, and now it's not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Silver lining. Yeah, people are being people are being smarter here I think hopefully more than most places and they realize that we just want to get back into our li our new lives because that's that's what this is and here we are doing this on zoom you know, I know. Interview. you know it's cool it's really cool you're doing this um, but it's like this is how it is for yeah. a while you know so I know. Do it this way. be smart scary. um and finally to end on I always ask my guests do you have it's quite deep but I like it. <laughs> I like deep. Let's go. Let's um, go deep. Do you have a quote or a mantra that helps you through tough times? It's a really good quote. My uncle, um, my uncle um, would always say, hold on, I have to, I want to get the exact quote. Hold yeah, on. you don't want to butcher it. Yeah. He says, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. That's Rumi. It's a poet. And I really li I like the, I, I kind of try to take that on for myself and just go like, you know, I grew up Buddhist and I have a very, 
I guess I'm not super, super spiritual, but I do feel like the best thing we can do for ourselves is, is stop worrying, stop being so anxious about what comes next, what I'm going to do, and what, what if I'm, am I in the right place, in the right time, what if this doesn't work out, and just sort of focus on inner peace and making sure that every moment of your life you're focusing on just doing the things that you believe in and that you enjoy yeah. um, and that you want to do, you know. And so with acting, sometimes when you don't have control, I go, well, how can I make something of my own, you know? How can I shoot something with a friend or write with music? I go, how can I do this on my own so I have control of, over this experience? Because a, a lot of the anxiety, I think, comes from not having control and not knowing what's going on sure. and not knowing. And so to take that back and to reclaim that, um, I feel like is really important. And I've been trying to do that a lot. And I, I mentioned that quote just because less about the wrong doing and right doing, but just like worrying about what's, what's right. And what's the, where the, you know, it's kind of like a plant on the grass being greener yeah. on the other side. And it's like, it's just not about, it's not about the grass. It's about the fucking journey across the street or whatever. You know what I mean? For like, sure. um, yeah. And I, and I think as long as we're kind of focusing on that path and that journey being one that is fulfilling and one that is, is challenging and one that there is a lot of failure involved. Like that's important, you know? Yeah. Um, and I try to keep that in mind whenever I have rejection, which there's so much of it. Um, so many times when you're like, this isn't working. I thought this was going to work. I thought this was going to work out. and It didn't. And that's just part of the journey. Like I ended up losing that job when I was 11 and I thought that was the end of my, that was the biggest, highest moment of my career ever, you know? Um, and then here I am now and I've had like a full already as a young man, I've been lucky enough to have a career where I've gotten to play many different characters and leads in films or for Julie Andrews or whatever. And <laughs> I never would have dreamed any of that. And if I had continued doing that voiceover when I was 11, I probably would be just doing, you know, specifically that kind of thing for the rest of my life, you yeah. know, a voiceover and focusing on that. And I don't know where I would be. And, uh, I think if I got stuck on that, I think I probably would have you know, it would have been a very different life. And I'm very lucky to have the life that I have now. And I'm very happy with that. In mm. that moment, I thought it was the end. And it's not. You no, know? So it, it never is until just try you're to focus, dead. <laughs> yeah. Just try to focus on that journey. And uh, sometimes it can be tough, but that's the, that's the fun part. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I love hearing everyone's in things that keep them going I think it's really I think it's good totally. for people to hear it um what's yours mine yeah oh gosh what's your go-to that is putting me on the spot um well I know this is like a really cliche one but yeah. ever since I was really 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 tiny my dad used to say two things to me every okay. morning before school he'd say work hard play hard and, play hard, okay. and then the other one was observe the masses, do the opposite. And I think that's the Ooh, main like that. that's the main one for me, which I've always tried to live by is observe the masses, do the opposite. Observe the masses, do that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I feel like that took like twenty five years to realize, okay, wait, like why am I trying to do the thing that everyone else is doing when I can just do my own thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, exactly. Or do the do the opposite is cool because you could just go like that's what's interesting, always. For sure, know? exactly. It's like, yeah. it's, it's a foolproof really cool. formula. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like simple, but very, very, yeah. Like you can't go wrong. At least try it, right? Exactly. At least try the opposite. For yeah. sure.